Hi there, welcome to this Alchemist Chemistry A-level video looking at skeletal formulae or skeletal structures. Now, a skeletal structure in chemistry is not like the skeleton of a human being, in that it is an endoskeleton underneath the surface. Instead, a skeletal formula is a simplified and streamlined formula used by chemists to represent molecules very quickly, very efficiently, and very clearly. And it follows a small set of concise rules that my skeleton friend here is going to outline to you now. In skeletal formulae, covalent bonds are shown as lines. So one line represents one covalent bond, two lines represents a double covalent bond, and three lines would represent a triple covalent bond. An intersection between two lines, i.e. where two lines meet, represents the position of a carbon atom. The end of a line represents the end of a molecule, usually ending in a CH3 or a methyl group. Now comes the key simplifying aspect of skeletal formulae. All carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms bonded to carbon atoms in the carbon chain itself are not shown with their symbols. That's C and H. So unlike a display formula where you can see lots of carbons and hydrogens present, you wouldn't see that in a skeletal formula. When we go through some skeletal formulae shortly, you'll see exactly how this is represented. And the final nugget of wisdom from our skeletal friend here is that heteroatoms, i.e. atoms that aren't carbon and hydrogen, so halogens are a good example there, and functional groups appear with their symbols shown. And the only exception there being carbon atoms in the carbon chain that form part of a uh, functional group. For example, um, a carbon zinc acid group has C double bond O and a single bond OH coming from the carbon, you wouldn't see the C for the carbon, but you would see the double bond O and the single bond OH for the rest of the carboxylic acid functional group shown in the skeletal formula. Now I'd like to work through some practice examples and the key objective of the day is to translate or convert these displayed formulae into their corresponding structural formulae. Now we're going to work through an intermediary stage to help us visualize how to do that with a good technique and then eventually we'll be really good and really well versed at constructing skeletal structures for all kinds of different molecules. The first example I've chosen to work through is a branched alkane, specifically 2-methylpentane and this is the displayed formula showing all the bonds and the positions of all the atoms for that particular molecule. Uh, this molecule is called 2-methylpentane because the longest carbon chain is 5 carbons long, and on the second carbon there is a methyl group, so 2-methylpentane, as following IUPAC, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry Rules. We're going to now try and translate this molecule, if you like, into a skeletal formula. Let's apply some of the conventions for the skeletal formula mentioned at the start of the video. Imagine a representation where you couldn't see any of the hydrogens and none of the carbon symbols either. Instead, intersections between two lines would represent the position of a carbon atom. The end of any drawn line would represent the position of a methyl group or CH3 group. We need to make sure we can visibly see that there are five carbons in a linear chain. So what would you draw if you were trying to represent that? Well, maybe your first instinct would be to draw something that looks a bit like this. Okay, where you can see there are five points along a chain representing the five positions of carbons, intersections between two lines equaling position of a carbon, and end of a line representing position of a methyl group. You also have an end of line here representing a methyl group for the branch as well. Now, that's a great first instinctual thing to draw, but unfortunately it's incorrect. Only because in reality, skeletal formula don't actually put these points for the carbon positions physically down. So if we drew the true skeletal formula in this manner, we get a sort of police baton style molecule like this one here, like a police nightstick in America. But unfortunately, it's really hard now to know how many carbons are represented by this long stretch of chain here. Without the points shown, it's impossible to know exactly how many carbon atoms this person wanted to represent in this linear chain. So I'm going to show you how we actually draw a skeletal formula to help the observer still realize how many carbons there are in the straight chain portion. So instead of drawing our molecule as a single straight line, we draw it with a zigzag. And that really allows us to emphasize the position of carbon atoms along this longest chain of molecule. So remember, the end of a line represents a CH3 group. So we've got a CH3 group here, here, and one for the branching methyl group. 
intersection between two lines represent the position of a carbon atom as well. So we've got a carbon atom positioned here, here, and here. So really easy to count along this chain and count the number of carbons present in this alkane molecule. One, two, three, four, five, with one branching carbon off of the second carbon position. So this is translating 2-methylpentane from a displayed formula with all the bonds shown and all the symbols for the atoms shown to a much more simplified, streamlined version without the carbons and hydrogen shown, just the positions of the carbons emphasized. This isn't quite the end. In reality, we wouldn't put these points on, and so we're going to simplify it even further now. So this is our final skeletal structure perfect version, where we have just the lines themselves without the points, still representing the carbons in those positions though. So this beginning of line is our first carbon, intersection is second, third, fourth, end of line is our fifth carbon, and this line ending here represents our methyl group. So we don't actually show the points where our carbon positions are. That's Even that is seen as laborious or too much um, time wasted when drawing a skeletal formula. This is super quick. We just literally draw a zigzag line with an extra little line coming up here, and that's 2-methylpentane represented skeletally. Now you can see the benefit of a skeletal formula. This quite, takes quite a long time to draw out the display formula. This little squiggle would take me seconds to draw, and any chemist worth their salt, ba-dum-tsh, free joke there, will recognize this molecule instantly. Let's try a few more and get practicing ourselves, but really good introduction uh, there, guys, in terms of building this idea up, and let's keep cracking forwards. Let's have a go now at a branched alkene rather than a branched alkane. The molecule I've chosen this time is 2 methyl one The key thing is it has a double bond between the carbons in the first and second positions. Um, you could just call this methylpropene because with the three carbon length chain, it's so short that um, you wouldn't be able to misconstrue where the methyl group's going to be. But I've added the numbers here in the name 2 methylpropene one just to give us a bit more information to help us draw our skeletal formula properly. Now, what I'd like you to do is to have a go at this before I reveal the answer. So, in your mind's eye, you should be simplifying this down, removing the symbols for the carbons, removing the symbols for the hydrogens, and thinking about intersections between lines to represent positions of carbons and number of lines equaling number of covalent bonds. Bring all that information together and draw what you think a simplified skeletal version of this molecule would be, still using uh, dots to represent carbon atoms currently for our intermediate level. And then in a second, I'll reveal my answer and we can do a comparison. So draw that right now and the reveal will happen in literally two seconds time. I really hope we've drawn similar things here. So I've used points to represent the positions of carbons. My first carbon, two lines representing the double bond found within this molecule to the second carbon position here. And then these two lines representing the two methyl groups ending in CH3 uh, both times. So that would be a skeletal representation of this displayed formula. And of course, simplifying it even further would be simply removing these dots for the position of the carbons. So these would be you know, just, just left without those dots present. So this would be the actual skeletal formula for 2 methylpropionine. okay? This representing the position of the first carbon, this intersection represent, representing this, the position of the second carbon, and these two lines representing the two uh, methyl groups ending the molecule, one of them being the branch. Fantastic. So that's our second skeletal formula, this time for an alkene. Now we're going to look at an alkyne. So alkynes, like alkenes, are classified as unsaturated molecules. But unlike alkenes that contain carbon-carbon double bonds, alkynes contain carbon-carbon triple bonds. So the alkyne I've chosen for this example is bute 2 ine which is a four-carbon length chain with a carbon-carbon triple bond in the center on the second carbon position. And I'd like you guys again to try and translate this displayed formula into our halfway house skeletal formula with the carbons shown as dots or points along the chain length. So as, as before, simplify this down. Simplify down the hydrogens and carbons and show dots for the position of carbons. And remember, in terms of skeletal formula, uh, covalent bonds are shown as lines and you need to show as many lines as there are covalent bonds present. And that includes with a triple bond. So think about that for a second, draw down what you think that would be, and then we'll compare our answers. So hopefully we've drawn similar things ideally. Um, so as before, we've got four points for the four carbon positions, 
intersections between lines represent the position of a carbon. End of a line represents a CH3 group. So we've got a CH3 group. We've got an intersection between lines representing a carbon, a carbon, and a CH3 group at the end as well. And between the second and third carbon, I've drawn three lines rather than one, representing our triple bond. Now, you may be wondering why I've been allowed to use a linear arrangement this time, whereas for my alkane, I had to show that zigzag pattern. Two reasons for that, really. One, it's much more obvious where the carbon positions are here because I can still see the intersections even in the straight line between the triple bond and the single bond. But secondly, it also emphasizes shapes of molecules. So this would be a linear molecule, whereas the alkane molecule, the carbons have a tetrahedral shape at each position uh, because it's forming four single bonds and therefore forming a tetrahedral structure each time and shape each time. So that zigzag pattern again is emphasizing that those carbons are tetrahedral in nature, whereas these ones are linear in nature in terms of shape of molecule. And so finally, turn this into a true skittle formula. We simply emit the dots. So first carbon position. This second position is our intersection where it suddenly goes from being single to triple bond. And it's really interesting that we don't actually do any connectors. It literally is just uh, two floating lines either side of our central line. But that is the position of the carbon that starts triple bond. That's the position of the carbon that ends triple bond. And then this additional little bit of line here is the final single bond going to our CH3 group. So it, it is quite a quite a leap of faith to be able to draw this uh, level of schizo formula, but hopefully you can see what's going on here. Carbon, carbon intersection to the triple bond, end of carbon intersection, triple bond, and then the single bond going to the CH3 group at the end. One, two, three, four carbons in the chain overall. So quite an advanced example there, but again, still following the same pattern trends and rules that all the other schizo formulae we've drawn so far have been doing. I'm going to do one more worked example, then I'm going to leave you guys with a problem to solve and check your understanding. Our final practice example is going to be a branched haloalkane. Specifically, the example I've chosen is 1-chloro-2,4-dimethylpentane. So I want to talk about the nomenclature of this before we crack on with the actual example itself. Um, this molecule is not known as the following. We would not call this molecule 5-chloro-2,4-dimethylpentane. It's a possible option. That would be counting... Uh, one to five in this direction rather than this direction. Now we don't do that for two reasons. Firstly, it's against the IUPAC naming or nomenclature rules because we're trying to produce a name that has the smallest number for the sum of the numbers used in the naming of the molecule itself. So uh, four plus two plus one, seven. Five plus four plus two, 11. This has the lowest sum of values for the positions of the functional groups and branches and therefore is the preferred name. This one does not, and is therefore the not preferred name. Secondly, sometimes you'll find that the functional group attached to a molecule is terminal, and therefore takes priority in the numbering of uh, the carbon atoms from that terminal functional group of importance. That's not necessarily the case with uh, the halogens, but in our next example, which is a carboxylic acid, that will be the case, and we'll look at that when we get to it. Now let's look at transforming or translating this displayed formula into a skeletal formula. So same as before, guys, we're gonna go through our intermediate level first. So we're gonna take away all the hydrogens from this molecule, take away all the carbon symbols. We're gonna keep the chlorine symbol. That's a heteroatom, not a carbon or hydrogen. Therefore, that will remain shown in our skeletal formula. And let's see what you guys come up with. And I'll do a reveal in a few seconds. So here is our skeletal structure with dots currently holding positions for where the carbons are. And you can see we have our one, two, three, four, five carbons in the linear chain, two CH3 groups coming off at the two and four position. Now, I've not really been worried about whether that methyl group was going up or down because of around single bonds, there's free rotation. So it, it doesn't really matter which side of the carbon I put the methyl group it's constantly rotating around that point, so it's not incorrect to put it on top, even though it was below in the display formula. They are still identical molecules due to that free rotation taking place around the single bonds. And finally, the key extra bit is the functional group is now present after carbon number one. I've drawn a sort of half bond rather than a full line to try and emphasize that I'm not ending in a CH3 group. Instead, I'm ending with the halogen, this heteroatom, this functional group is present. So. Sometimes it's appropriate to draw a slightly shorter line with the heteroatom at the end of it to emphasize that it's not ending in another carbon, in a CH3 methyl group. Instead, it's ending with this chlorine atom. So displayed formula converted to a intermediate skeletal formula. And then if we then simplify that even further to our pure 
Skill formula, all the dots vanish. So we've got CH3 group here and for the two uh, branches with the lines ending. Any intersection is the position of a carbon atom and a half bond line to our chlorine functional group heteroatom, our haloarcane is complete. Fantastic guys. We're gonna now have a go at a real example you're gonna work on yourselves. I will go through the answer still, but this one very much is student led. So best of luck and I'll introduce the question now. Okay, ladies and gents, all of your training up to this point has led to this moment. I'm gonna leave you for about 10 seconds to ponder and write down the answer, sketch down the answer to this particular question. Here I have the displayed formula of a carboxylic acid. It's actually 4-ethyl, 3-hydroxy, heptanoic acid, the longest chain in the molecule is seven carbons. On the first carbon, we have the functional group, which is a carboxylic acid group. On the third carbon, we have a alcohol group, a hydroxyl group. And on the fourth carbon, we have a branch, which is two carbons long, and therefore is an ethyl branch. Your job is to construct a pure, proper skeletal formula for this molecule. I'm gonna give you a 10 second countdown before I reveal the answer. And here we go. First of all, through that intermediate level. What I've done is I've turned each of the carbons into a point along the chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the fourth point, one, two, three, four, I've added the ethyl group. Now again, due to that free rotation, I've drawn it up, just give me more space to draw it. And it's got an intersection for one carbon and ending in CH3. And finally, the key things are where the functional groups are. On the third carbon, that's one, two, three, I have placed an OH group, okay, the uh, alcohol group, the hydroxyl group is present there. And the key other thing is on that carboxylic acid functional group, the double bond oxygen and single bond OH are emanating from that point, are coming from that last carbon. And I've drawn a half line to allow me to attach the OH group and show that I'm not ending in a CH3 methyl group. And again, simplifying it down to show the pure schedule formula you guys were asked to draw, it would look like this. So each intersection is a carbon. So one, two, three, four, five, six intersections, six carbons. This is an end of a line, so ending CH3. We've got an intersection here for a carbon, and then ending on this line here, CH3, that's our branch. A half line to an OH group, which is our, our functional, one of our functional groups, and our terminal higher priority functional group, which is the carboxylic acid group, double bond to an oxygen from the carbon point, and a, a short bond to an OH for the OH group in that carboxylic acid functional group. Quite an advanced example there, but if you manage to get that really well done, that's a huge step forward in terms of your ability to draw skeletal formulae, a really vital skill for drawing structures efficiently, effectively, and quickly. Well done guys, I really hope that helps you to better understand how to draw and construct skeletal formulae, particularly from display formulae. Just realized during the video, I was occasionally wafting my hand over the molecules like a Jedi mind trick. These aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> I didn't even know I was doing that, sorry about that. Um, just wanna say, if you found this video useful, please do think, do think about giving it a like. You could subscribe to the channel, you could even ring the bell, to give me a divide of our latest content. I do put out videos on a weekly basis and your support is hugely appreciated and really helps motivate me to keep going. You could even share this video or other videos on the channel with friends studying chemistry to help them along as well. And finally, last thing I wanna say is a big thank you. Um, for sticking around, thanks. And uh, as always for me, take care, bye now.